stationary states must have some sort of energy n. That's just to mean uh, when you have when you have your psi function, it is of some energy level n. So, for example, it could be psi of uh, energy level one or two, really anything. This comes in handy later when we're combining them linearly. So some definitions, the Schrodinger equation is just a time-dependent equation which yields a time-independent equation. And this TISE is used to calculate energy eigenvalues. So looking here, we have we have the time-dependent Schrodinger equation is given by this operator this is uh, this partial derivative with respect to x of this time dependent psi this gives you your kinetic energy this is your potential energy operator and this is what that equals to using this you can get your time independent equation which as you can see there's no time yay no time this solves for the system's energy now these these words eigenvalues so energy here is going to be an eigenvalue of this eigenfunction so when you have the Hamiltonian, because that's what this this is the Hamiltonian being applied to psi x, this is the eigenfunction. The eigenvalue of that function is this E. This will come in handy later as well when we're talking about the um, if something commutes then its eigenfunction operation will get you the same eigenvalue. Well, not, not the same eigenvalue, but you'll be able to perform the same uh, perform the same operator and get simultaneously perform two operations and uh, get eigenvalues that do not uh, that do not collapse so more definitions a stationary wave function is a magnitude that is constant over time so so even so if there's some sort of time component it doesn't matter because the amplitude This amplitude stays constant over time. This might be the real part here. And then the imaginary part comes around here and it always keeps the same, uh, same magnitude. OK. And finally, all solutions for, for one-dimensional time-independent Schrodinger equations are stationary and orthogonal to each other for a constant potential. So what does that mean? It means that when you're solving the TISE to get some sort of energy eigenvalue, those solutions are going to be stationary and orthogonal. Now, Getting back to these linear uh, combinations here. Linear combinations, first of all, these need to be normalized with these constants. Normalization 
is done like this. A function is considered normalized if the integral of the complex conjugate times the, si the function dx is equal to 1. So, it's, so you can see that in its entirety. A wave function is normalized if this integral is 1. And it's just repeating the same thing. Wave function is orthogonal to wave functions. I should probably say two functions. Because because a function is normalized, this applies this applies only to one wave function. This is normalized to itself. You're using the same energy level function. These are both at i. When you're doing a comparison of two functions to see if they're orthogonal, their energies have to be different. They have to have i and j ends. The same integral, but for two different wave functions, s equals zero in order for this to work. Now, orthonormal linear combinations. That's if they're both normalized and orthogonal. If two functions are orthonormal, then the sum of their coefficients squared here will equal to 1. Therefore, this function by itself, this uh, coefficient by itself rather, in order to find it you take the square root of it. So what does this mean? It means that the sum of the squares of coefficients under the square root will equal 1. These are for normalized and orthogonal orthonormal linear combinations. And finally, on this page, the expectation value is basically a weighted average of a quantity from a wave function. So, for example, let's say we wanted to find where we would expect um, x. You know, we have we have p of x. You know, let's, let's have some sort of function here, p of x. Let's say I wanna I wanna find where this is. So we take the expectation value of the position, which is defined by the function of um, a to b, the integral of a to b rather, of x times the function dx. Um, we'll take a look at an example of these later.